Okay, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this is a big one. I hope you are having a wonderful day in the Lord. No matter what your troubles, I pray that the Lord is filling you with peace, understanding and with joy in your heart, knowing of his soon appearing. I know times are hard. Many of you are in terrible, terrible troubles. But God is with you. The race is almost run. We are so close to his coming. It could be, I don't think it will be immediately after I've spoken because he wants the word out. So we've got a little time, a little is happening, but it is so soon. It could be the end of this week. It could be next week. I don't know, but it it is happening. It is real and it is coming and do not lose power in the word. Do not lose strength. If you've lost your strength, go to the Lord, but keep running, keep looking. Don't give up. I have a big one today. Five dreams. Oh, this has been hard. I have had a few trials even just to get to the computer. Oh, this, it's not a computer, it's a square thing. Just to get to this, so many interruptions. It's just been absolutely um, difficult. I, I don't understand. Well, I do. It wasn't time. God would have made the time if it was time, but I believe this is the time. The first dream, I'll get straight into it. I'll get straight into it. The first dream was there was, I was lying in a bed and I just looked down along my body. I could see my body <laughs> in bed can't do that can you um, but I could look down and see my body in bed and one foot was sticking out and one foot under the covers and the covers were sort of flopped over my feet and my body and there was a book between my feet and I stepped out of the bed for some reason and the blankets were still in the position as if I was still in the bed but I wasn't there I was out and I looked and I thought that's funny and I saw the book and I picked it up and I just put it to the side. Still on the bed, but put it to the side. And then I got back in the bed as if nothing had happened. But then another part of me got out and looked. At the same time, because I still wasn't in the bed when this other part was looking. And I looked and I saw all of this and I, the part of me that just got into bed didn't even pay attention to it and this part of me looked and it said oh that's the bible so when it was picked up that's the bible it was between my feet and put aside and then the part of me that understood things poked the blankets where there was nobody but the blankets didn't move except at my pressing they stayed as if I was there but I wasn't but I could move them and then that part of me got in bed as well. In the end, we got in together, but we had two separate experiences. That was quick, short, that was it. But what did it say? The Bible was between my feet at the time. The Bible was holding time. Jesus is the Word of God, the Word of God is the Bible. Jesus was holding, was and is holding time. And our feet are shod with the Word to go forward with the Word. And He is holding time. Our race isn't run yet. He is holding time in His hands. The Word holds the time. We have no control over time. We may push a bit here and push a bit there, but overall, God is in control. And we must remember this. doesn't matter what appears to be happening around you. And remember, the flesh will not see what's really happening. That was in the spirit. I was in two parts. 
I was in the flesh. The flesh just saw it but didn't understand, didn't concern itself. But the spirit saw and considered. We must see and consider and understand. And always the Bible, the word of God, Jesus is the answer in all situations. Jesus is the answer. So that's the first dream. The second dream was, um, again, it, it had, so it was like that was the introduction to the theme that Jesus is time. He is in control. The second dream was we were in a, in a city type of an area. Yes, we were in a city. We stepped out of a laneway and there were these tall, dirty, dingy buildings. I'm not saying dirty as in muddy sort of that, but they just felt creepy. Grey, creepy buildings, very straight, very angular, um, very uninviting, very dingy. The colour, the, the atmosphere was dingy. And looked down the main area, of the main street, and when we looked there was people in what seemed to be in motion but absolutely perfectly still. Their clothing, everything, just as the blanket, stayed in a position that it was at the moment of the freezing. And these people were in motion but still completely still. Time stopped for them but we were still moving in time. Time stopped for them, but it didn't stop for us. And another group of people that looked just like us came past and they looked around and one of them said, Oh, this looks reminiscent of the story of the rapture and just went on past as if nothing was happening. And we, what? What did he say? And we looked and, it is, it is. And so... We realised what it was, but they didn't. They thought it was a fairy tale. But then they all everything came to life when we realised this is it. It's time. And then everyone started to turn on us, including those people. They started to chase after us. And we ran and we ran and we ran. And then we had to get out of there quick. So we jumped into a car. And we started to drive off in this car. But they're following us. They keep on following us. And we got to this point where they were all, we'd got out of the city onto a road and we could see there was a road going off in the distance, people be running behind us. But then we saw people coming in front of us and in between us and them was a gate and there were guards at the gate. And the guards seeing us started to close the gate and we're thinking, oh my goodness, even the guards are trying to hold us in so that these ones behind can get to us. We're trapped. But just at the moment we thought we were trapped, we saw off to the right just before the gate. And it, it was strange because it was as if the guards didn't know the road was there. They're stopping us. But there was this little track that went off, a little road, and it went off and it went up a hill, around and came back down behind the bad guys. And up on the hill there was a whole heap of people sitting and watching and cheering us on. They were cheering us on. And so we're frantically, we get there, the gates close, and we're frantic and we're turning up that road. And we're going up the road and we stop up there with those people. And then we see the guards were actually fighting off the others. They were protecting us. So we had got to this place up on the hill. And I didn't realise till this morning exactly what that was about. The world is chasing us. The world hates us. The sinners hate us. But there's going to be a day very soon and we won't understand that God is fighting the fight for us. And we won't see it come until it's right on us. And we go off. And we're called up onto the hill. That's the rapture. 
And while we're in the rapture, there's the battle going on and God's soldiers are down here battling. And then when it's over, we get to come in down at the bottom end of it. Remember, we come back at the end of the tribulation. That was that loop and we were in heaven for it. That was the rapture. And we have almost there. We're being chased, but we're almost there. And God's guards are protecting us. God is here with us. Emmanuel, God is here with us. So that was a very, very beautiful, beautiful thing to know. That was extremely beautiful. Even though we thought we were lost, he gave the way. He made the way for us to come through. And he stilled the time so we could see what was going on around us. Those that saw and didn't take it to heart, they were lost. But those that saw and took it to heart, they were sheltered up on the hill until the end. Don't let anyone tell you there's no rapture. Now, the third dream. Oh, this one, yes. The third dream, There was we were in a great big house. Big houses seem to come into my dreams a lot. And we're being pursued by evil people from every direction. They're running after us, trying to catch us. And then just up ahead of us and to the right, a little door presents itself. It's small. It's very small. And we climb in through that door. It was like a little closet door. And we climb in through that door and we slightly go up on a, on a angle. We rise up a little bit. But these people now are crowding the door and there's a guard at the door. And the guard is checking anyone that at this point wants to come in. They're being checked. And the checking system is a piece of cooked meat, a sausage or a chop cooked, is being placed on a ledge with a little peep hole. And if they take that to eat it, they're allowed in. But then this horrible piece of raw bloody meat is placed and if they grab that blood all over them no they're not allowed in well they're 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 wicked they're evil they they're coming for us but if they've if they're not of that they come into this place now at this place we start to move through and it opens up a bigger expanse still a little bit dark here but we can see there's more light up ahead it, it's opening out but as we're going up, this one young lady, she stops and she just turns and there's an altar. And she turns and she's mesmerised by this altar. And on the altar were photographs of all of her past lovers. And uh, mementos of every date she was on with these lovers. And she's just standing there with a smile. Isn't it lovely? She couldn't move on because she was caught back by her past. She she wanted that. She, it was like I was looking at Lot's wife when she turned back. She was in a safe zone. There was still more ahead, more tr troubles ahead in life. But she was in a safe zone. And instead of looking forward to Jesus, our husband, she stayed reminiscing of what was back there, the good times. Or like the Hebrews in the, in the wilderness after Moses brought them out, he was up on that hill for a bit, talking to God. And they were waiting for him, but they gave up and they remembered the good times. Didn't remember they were slaves and beaten and crushed, but remembered the good times with the good old gods remember the good old gods that we sacrificed our children to but we fornicated and we loved that didn't we our flesh was really happy with the those bits so it was that same sentiment going on Oops, here. yes dad's coming through isn't that funny okay here we go again this is another strange thing the interruptions are just coming hard and fast Satan doesn't want this out, but God does. Now, 
So then we move on up, we leave her behind, we move on up and there's this open expanse. And when we're looking out over the open expanse, we can see in the far distance on, the, on another hill, way, way over there, the tiny glimmer of a flame of light. There's a fire way, way over there. And we're looking and we know that we've got over just a bit further. We've got our supplies. So we're ready to go and grab our supplies, get in our truck and, and head on. We're, we're out of here. And there's a lot of people there at the same time with us. But suddenly as we look back, the flame is no longer there. It's here. It's all around us. It's just surrounded us. The ground has now turned into um, lava with those black pads of lava floating over the, the um, cracks of hot burning light lava. You know how you get those bright red things. That's what everywhere, there was nowhere to step. Suddenly, down above us, from behind and above us, come, plop, 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 great big mats sitting and towels wet towels sitting on the lava, creating a stepping place for us. And we stepped across. As we stepped, they vanished. It just dissolved, but it was enough for us to get over, but no one else, once we got to the other side of that. There were people also that got that far with us. We got to there. But then in this other group started to turn because they had nothing left to go on and we had a truck full of supplies. We had our energy levels ready. We had prepared. They hadn't, and they were, they were spent. They had nothing to move on forward, no more. And they demanded of us that we loan them. They weren't going to steal, according to them, but we would loan them our supplies forever. <laughs> that's not stealing, and that's not loaning. Um, so they were going to borrow it forever and leave us behind. And we realised, we can't do that, that's ours. It was the wise and the the foolish virgins, wasn't it? We'd all run the race, we'd got there. We were in the room waiting for the bridegroom. And the virgins that were wise had their provisions, had their spirit filled, they had their lamp lit and the the provisions ready to go on. And the foolish had no provision to go on. They didn't have any more flame. They didn't have anything more to go with. And they wanted to take of the wise. But the wise were wise and they said no. And there was no power that they had could take what you have. Unless you give it. That's why they ask it. Because they cannot take it. But they ask you to give it freely forever. They're asking you to give up your salvation for them, but they that's not true salvation for them. That was your portion. So, and then woke up. So God is telling us, keep running the race. He is going to put, no matter how tough it is around you, he is always going to put the pathway there because Jesus is the path. He is the way, the truth, the life. He is it. We stay on his path. He will protect. And remember, it's about the spirit, the soul inside. It's not about the flesh. He will give us what we need. He will create that pathway. But don't stop and turn back like Lot's wife. Don't build altars like the Hebrews of Moses. And don't be like the foolish virgins and not have provision understanding of the future. Jesus said, the word of God is food for us. That's our provision. It's the word of God. We must take it in. Those that haven't taken in the word of God are going to run out when the time comes because they don't know what's next. They don't believe that this is really real and they don't know the next step of God. They lose faith that he's coming because they don't know they didn't eat the word. 
they didn't let it digest. Jesus is coming. We keep going on our race. It is a race to the finish and we will make it, my loves. So that was number three. I hope I got it all under under um, order for you. Oh, this was oh, this is the next one. Yes, number four. I was visiting my sister, not my sister. You know, these are never my real family. I was visiting my sister, and she wanted, with a group of her friends, to go take me down into this city. It was a new. Well, it wasn't down because it was up. It was a new city on a hill. It was, it was bright. It was everything gay, noisy, lights flashing, and there was a new shopping centre in the city. And she wanted to take me there, and I went with her in the in her car at this point. And when we got there, there were these ugly heads, each head the size of a, a whole person, just the head turning all in a row. These heads turning just outside the business and they were laughing this oh evil laugh big mouths open just turning and laughing at everybody and people were going in and I oh look I don't like this it's it's loud it's it's horrible I just want to go back to where we were when we were children I just want to see the old town once more oh you want to go there that's all the way down the hill. You don't want to go there, but there it is. You can see it from here. It's down there. It's horrible. And I got in a car. turned out to be my car. How it got there, don't know, but it was my car. I got into the car and I started heading off down to the old town. And as I got, I was almost there. I was at the outskirts of the town and I... The car just would not go on any further. The um, the accelerating pedal turned out to be not a pedal. It was something like this sitting on the floor. But it was wearing down and wearing down till it was now flat with the floor. I couldn't press on it. It wouldn't put any acceleration in. And the fuel tank was empty. And I just coasted into this petrol station or garage, that some call them. I just coasted into it and as I got there, I got out and explained to the man, the owner, that I had no power left and I had no acceleration left. My car is, is broken. And he, oh, that's all right. Come on in. And I went in to this lovely little quaint waiting room. It was lovely old worldy waiting room with a, a bench seat against a window with our backs to the window and there was this lovely counter and on the counter there was an old counter with glass shelving and glass top and in it was beautiful cakes and pastries little tiny just bite-sized ones they were beautiful and the ladies that were cooking them they were there standing beside and it was all free it was all free and then one lady came out and she had she was doing it in a frying pan in front of everyone, turning the filling into the pastry. And it was still hot and a young man came in, oh, that looks lovely. And he ate it and, oh, it was lovely. And everyone's watching them do it. It was just so pleasant and wholesome. And then outside we noticed, I noticed that, Everyone kept looking out as if to see, is it time? Is is their vehicle ready yet? And outside was the the owner's son was at the petrol pump putting the petrol or the gas into the vehicles. And another one would come by and he's filling up. And you could see everyone thinking, oh, he hasn't done our car yet. He's just busy with that. He's, he's not getting round to us. And... Time went on and it seemed quite a while. And then some some lost patience. And you, they got up and they said, Oh, look, he won't get to our car tonight. We'll go home and we'll come back tomorrow. 
And the, it did pass my mind that, oh, maybe I should go off. But then I thought, if I go off, I've got to go back to the city where my sister was. I didn't really want to go there. So I thought, I'll ring her up and let her know I'm still here. I went outside to ring her up. And as I did, I went out and I walked across. And there was like a cliff edge. And when I looked down, the city wasn't up there. The city was down there. We were above the city. It wasn't, it wasn't above us. We were above it. It was so strange, but it, it seemed so natural. And while I'm out there, I noticed a couple of people leaving. But I also noticed the son at the petrol or gas pump turning and watching. And he looked disappointed. They didn't want to wait for him as they left. And I went back inside and I woke up. What was that? I think most of you know what that was. It's this same theme. Jesus is doing things in his time and we are being tested. He is watching to see if you have the patience of faith. Remember those with the patience of faith in Christ, they get to go in the rapture. He keeps them from the evil times. Those that went back into the world and wanted to do it on their own strength didn't wait for the refill. They were the ones that will stay. They still believe, but they will stay. Those that stayed with God in the word, in his rest, many of us, oh darlings, many of us are tired, weary, he gives us our rest. He tells us he will give us our rest. He will fill us with his spirit. These people that were going by fast, they were doing the race. They were there. They were full of energy. They just needed a top up. And that's what he was doing, topping them up. But some have been running for a long time and are tired and feel the need to rest and God doesn't mind it. He has planned for it. He had the station there ready for you to come in under his care. And you can come in and rest with him. And he will heal you. He will fill you up. But it's in his time. You must have the patience, the patience of faith. And you will receive rest. And we were getting it. We didn't fail the race. God is healing us in our spirit. He is giving us the strength until the time that he calls us and says, it's time. We're still in the race. We're just at the refueling station. We're still in the race. We haven't stopped. We're, God is giving us our rest. It's not about us. We cannot move on in our own strength. Now, there was another part to the dream, and that was that while I was in the building and all this food was going around, the father came out and said to the whole group, now that we're gathered together, I can announce that this young lady has decided to come and stay with us and she will be joining the cooks, our wonderful team of cooks. And my instant reaction was, oh no, I was afraid because if I had to cook now, I haven't cooked for a long time and I only had a few specialities in my life. I was good at some things, but not at, these ladies are really good. Everyone will see the true me. The true me hasn't got this sort of skill. They're remembering the good things. But I have a lot of failures. and But then I just agreed, yes, I'm coming. But you know what that is? We doubt ourselves. God doesn't doubt us. And yes, we've failed in the past. But our failures are as far from the east as to the west. They're not remembered anymore. We are being filled. We are being given the new strength. We are being given everything by God. He just wants us to walk in what he gives us. 
We don't be afraid that someone will remember what we were like. We don't be afraid that we're not as good as we as people think we are. We will be everything that God wants us to be because he is our author. He is, if we give ourselves to him, everything he wants of us will be done and we will have every gift that he gives us if we accept and I accepted. The challenge is accepted. God is with us. We walk in his strength. We don't step off the path. We don't get tired of waiting and we don't doubt ourselves. We don't look back into our past because our past is gone. And when we are seen in heaven, we are the new creation completely. So don't worry about the future. God's got it. Now, the last dream, I've got to do this quickly because I can hear Dad's almost ready to come out and I want it all done. The last dream, oh yes, cars came into this a lot. Driving in this old car and just in front there was a war going on, I think, because there were rockets going straight up in the air like this for about a half a mile. I don't know what that is in kilometres, I'm sorry. Our country works in kilometres and my mind does not. So there were rockets going up and then just before we arrived, some of them started to misfire and come straight across and there was nowhere for us to go because to our right there was a lake and it went off in a great distance. But slamming on the brakes suddenly my car spun, the tail of it went into the water onto a little platform of water and up against the edge of the of the lakeside and the shoreline and I got out and I'm calling for help because now a whole column of soldiers have come and the front machine had parked just in beside us and that was full of the generals and the officials in their suits and behind them truck after truck of military and I'm calling out please come and help us come and help us I had three people in the car two elderly men and an elderly lady. I had them in the car. We couldn't get them out because the door couldn't open against the bank of the of the lake and the other side was deep water. So I couldn't get them out. The hood and the bonnet was sitting up on the top of the ledge and the back of it going down in the water. No one would help. The men wanted to. I could see they did, but the generals and the officials said, no, 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 we had to stay there but I wasn't going to take that. And so I, the soldiers could see me trying to think out what on earth can I do? They're watching me trying to map out in my mind, what can I do? And I got a rope out of the car and I realised there's nowhere to tie it and there's nowhere to, on the vehicle and there's nowhere to tie it on anything. It's short, I can't get it up and I couldn't pull the car. And they're all, it's as if they're willing me on. And then I saw on the back, on the front of one of the trucks, a big winch machine so I went over and no, no one's going to stop me so I went over and I got the the cord of the winch it was a big wire thing and I pulled it kept pulling it till it reached the car still nowhere to hook it on to so I decided I'll go and put it round the back of the car and come up the other side and I've got it where can I put it to pull it with and I hooked it onto the back of the officials car they got mad and I'm starting to tighten up the winch. It's got this thingy and I'm turning this thingy and the handle and it's pulling the car a little bit from the bottom of it. <laughs> like getting a child's bottom and pulling them up. It was gorgeous. And I'm pulling them up and the soldiers were, yay. And the officials said to the soldiers, slack off that rope, pull your vehicle forward. And they had to obey, but what did they do? They accidentally, on purpose, instead of going forward, which would slacken the cord, they went in reverse suddenly. And the car came popping up on the thing and then they came forward. <laughs> so they helped me up with the car. Start, tried to work out how to start the car. It, the motor wouldn't run. So what did I do? I went to the edge of the, of the water and I held my right hand up to God. 
And I said, I cannot do this, Lord. I cannot do this. Please give me the strength to move this car so that the soldiers can all see there is a God in heaven and he does work miracles on earth. And I just, I didn't feel any different. I just went back and I, they're all watching. They heard the prayer and I went back. I didn't tinker. I just put my hand on the bonnet of the car and the motor started. Vroom, vroom, vroom. And I quickly got in the car and the, the officials, they were angry, but the soldiers were cheering. And we, I moved the car around between the two vehicles and headed it towards, but the bombs were still coming and everyone's wondering, what are we going to do? The officials telling us to stay where we are. The soldiers frightened for us. If we went through that, we would be killed. And I and the elderly people in the back of my car said, they're frightened, they're frightened. And in the distance, on the other side of it, we could see a group of people. And there was a young man there and he's calling us on, come on, come on, just look at me, come on. And so I got a blanket out of the car and I put it over the front door, closed the door, put it over the back door, closed the door. So that side of the car that had the rockets in vision, we couldn't see. And I got in the car and I just slowly moved on towards the voice that was beckoning us. And some of the soldiers were t terrified for us and they were cheering us to get there, to get there. And we did get there. And some of them, seeing what we had done, they shuffled themselves in the vehicles and those that were going to obey the officials got in certain vehicles, but the front vehicles were loaded with those that were going to disobey. They all wanted to come, but these ones said, we're going now. And so they got in their trucks and they followed our path. And the young man, the other side, come on, come on. And they did, they came on and they got there. They got to the other side with us. You know who that was. That was Jesus. Come on, finish it. Don't look at what's happening. Put your eyes on me. Don't look left and right. Keep your eyes on me. I'll get you through. Right, sorry, it's a busy time of day at the moment. Um, Dad's up and about. Um, so you know that that's who it was. It was Jesus. He was there calling them on. And through our perseverance, through our trust and our faith and our going on, those that don't yet know, watch, see what we do. And us going on through it all, through the troubles and not giving up on watching where we're going, watching for Christ. We encourage and give faith to the next person to follow. We think it's all in vain. We don't understand that God is using us to help them. And those that put their trust, even at that last moment, through that last part, they put their trust, they saw us, they put their trust in Christ and they watched him. They saw us, watched him, and they knew we got to watch that guy. And they followed us. But they followed him because they trusted. That got them through. So don't ever think that what you're going through isn't helping somebody else. God uses everything for his purposes. So I'll have to leave it at that, my darlings. God be praised, he got me through this just when it had to be finished. The whole thing is Jesus is in control. We must never turn back. We must never hold back, look back to the past. Don't let the fears of being known by others hold you back because God washes you clean. Everything that you think is wrong in your life it's gone. Nobody, nobody 
condemns you because con condemnation is he. There is no condemnation of the one that follows God. When you put your trust in Jesus, when you know he is the way, the truth, the path, the life, when you know he is all in all, when you know he died on that cross, he lived a sinless life, came to earth manifest in the flesh. God manifest in flesh, came, lived a sinless life, took all of our sin upon his, his self, was crucified, was tortured, was mocked. Everything happened to him. He shed every drop of his blood that you would be covered. Your sins are washed in his blood when you put your trust in him. When you repent, turn away from your sins and move forward. Don't look left and right. Don't worry what's going on. Yes, terror is happening, but it's the flesh. Keep your spirit watching the Lord. Control the flesh and watch with the spirit. You are going to Christ. And he is coming. He is coming. He is he is here ready. And he's watching everything. Be ready. Keep your lamp filled. Keep your provisions filled. Eat of the word of God because it is meal. It is meat for the soul. Keep your soul satisfied in God. That's it. I got through it. Praise God I got through it. His word, he wanted you to know. He is wonderful. God be praised. I love you so much, so much. I'm going to see you so quickly. He will be here imminently. So be ready, no matter what. And remember, you are allowed to rest in him. Don't rest in the world. Rest in him. He will give you what you need. He will fill up your tank. He will give you the sweets. And remember, there were cakes and sweet cakes. That's heaven too. God eats cake. Remember Sarah in the desert. She prepared a cakes for Jesus. God be praised. He loves you. May he make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. I love you. God bless you. Amen.